Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Steph. So in this video, I'm going to give you the five key skills that you got to pick up as a noob developer. If you learn these things, you will become a very valuable developer. So let me give you the, the quick bullet points and then I'll jump into the details. Number one, you got to learn the fundamentals. Number two, you got to learn refactoring. Number three, design patterns. Number four, SQL and databases. And finally, great communication skills. All right, so what are the fundamentals? The fundamentals are the basics, things that are fundamental to coding and programming. And you will see that regardless of the language, they are consistent to a great degree. What does that mean? That means that if you learn JavaScript, you'll learn a lot already about all the modern languages, Java, C Sharp, PHP, Python, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So fundamentals are slightly different though, depending on what you're doing. So C++ fundamentals will be slightly different to a certain extent than JavaScript fundamentals, but nonetheless, the fundamentals are the key to mastery in not only programming, by the way, in anything that you study, whether it be martial arts, whether it be business, whether it be money management, uh, nutrition and diet, just being healthy, and coding, of course. So the fundamentals. So I teach the web stack because it allows the widest variety of job opportunities and the widest variety of the types of programming you can do. There's many different types. There's visual programming, there's highly detailed, uh, kind of math-centered, we'll, we'll call it. Not math, but logic-centered programming. Uh, let me dispel, dispel a myth. Math is not important in 99% of programming. Let me dispel that myth. Math is not important in 99% of programming. This comes up every now and then. Don't worry about it. If you don't know math, it's not important. So in the web stack, the fundamentals include the base languages, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. Not only that, you have to understand the environment in which those languages operate. So you have to understand how the web browser works, understand client servers, the request response model, domain names, URLs, all these things that are not necessarily directly related to the languages, but are key. And that goes with any language. You have to understand the environment in which you are coding or programming the languages for. Those are the fundamentals. All the complex stuff that you see out there, all the very advanced libraries and frameworks that you may or may not be aware of now, all these things, all they are are just fundamentals stack on top, stacked on top of each other like a hamburger. So you don't want to jump into those advanced frameworks first, what you want to do is you want to jump into the fundamentals. What I found in my personal career, that whenever I came across some technology that I found difficult to understand, it was uh, typically because there was some gap in my knowledge with regards to the fundamentals. Something in the fundamentals I missed or did not know, which affected my ability to understand the library. Or the library is just poorly written. That also happens. All right, number two. Refactoring. Refactoring is a process of cleaning up your code. There's links below to a couple of great books, seminal books on it, and I actually have it here. Here's a book, Refactoring. Uh, Martin Fowler, seminal book. This one is written in Java. There's another one below for JavaScript, but these principles are universal. Refactoring is basically cleaning up code and making it more efficient, more easily maintainable. If you learn refactoring, by learning refactoring, you're gonna become a better developer because you're gonna just, more likely, you're gonna write better code from the get-go. So learn refactoring, that's a huge thing that will up your game, level up your game as a developer far more quickly than uh, learning a new library or something. Next one is design patterns. Design patterns are just agreed upon best practices or best, best ways or, of organizing code. Um, so design patterns, there's many out there, although in your career you're probably going to use just a handful. The most popular design pattern is something called MVC. You can find other videos in my collection. I have over 2,000 videos, I think, on YouTube now. Something around 2,000. And I've done videos on design patterns, so you can check those out if you're interested. Essentially, after you learn the fundamentals, you jump into some refactoring, and then you get some design patterns. Again, design patterns are just 
ways of organizing code uh, in an efficient way. The reason people came up with design patterns is because they were able to share, hey, if you have this problem here, use this design pattern. Structure your code in this way. And it's also, uh, besides a way of transferring knowledge in terms of how to approach certain common pro programmatic problems or programmatic challenges you have to face, it's also a way to communicate quickly. So if I have a team of developers I'm working with, I say, okay, we're going to build this system here. It's going to be MVC based, and we're going to make heavy use of dependency injection. These are two design patterns, dependency injection and MVC, and developers are trained in design patterns. will go, oh, okay, I know what it wants. So it's a good way to quickly communicate complex ideas. So number four, I said SQL databases. Now a database, it's just a piece of software that's used to store data. It's a base, it's a uh, database, it's a base of data, database. Now SQL is a type of database, a class of database that's probably, well not probably, it is the most popular type of database out there, period. There are other ones out there like NoSQL and object-based databases. And I think there's other structures as well, but by far and away, the SQL-based database is the most popular. The bottleneck for any web app, what slows it down is the database. That's 90% of the time. So learning how to write SQL, the language of databases, and then learning how to design well-configured, well-designed databases will make you a much better developer in most situations. Again, not everybody uses SQL databases, but they're so popular and they're used, I would, I don't know, I could argue 95% of the time. So you learn SQL databases and of course SQL, the language, SQL is short for structured query language. It's a language that is structured, uh, excuse me, SQL, it's a language for querying, basically asking questions, um, and it's structured. It's structured in a very particular way. The final skill I recommend you work on is communication skills. When you are a developer, yes, you have to communicate with other people, whether your co-workers, your boss, your clients. Good communication skills, written and verbal, are extremely important, and oftentimes, People who can communicate best will advance in their careers much more quickly. So yes, you have to learn how to code, you have to understand design patterns and refactoring, et cetera, but communication skills is just as important uh, in my experience as a developer going back to the 90s. So one way to get better communication skills is to learn to write better. So here's a book, a recommendation on writing well. Very famous book. You do this, you read this book, you even do just a, I don't know, do four or five chapters. Your writing skills will get much better. So people will appreciate that when you're sending business emails and so on. But uh, by writing better, your communication skills will improve as well. If you want to learn the fundamentals, since I'm pushing books, if you want to learn the fundamentals of the web stack, HTML, CSS, and the web, check out my book. At this point in time, I don't think I make any money on this book, so I'm not recommending this because I make money with it. I'm recommending it because uh, it's a good book. I wrote this several years ago, well, five years ago, but it's still evergreen because everything I teach in here is 100% up to date today in 2022. So if you like to read, you like diagrams and images and photos and a nice story, an explanation of how to write websites, how to build web pages and the fundamentals, check out my book. If you prefer a more interactive training, you can check out the links below. I got a bunch of uh, courses, but most interestingly, I have my bootcamp. It's called UncleSteph.com. Well, go to UncleSteph.com. It's a hybrid bootcamp model, unique out there. If you want the full experience of distance, self-paced learning and live support, check out my bootcamp. It's the best of both worlds. Uh, people really like it. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.